Okay, I had a request from someone to demonstrate the actual usage of this Tentec C21. This is an old 1977 novice style radio. It does Morse code CW only as far as transmitting. It can receive sideband, uh, but you can't transmit on sideband. It covers 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, uh, 15 meters, and 10 meters and has very basic controls. So I thought I'd demonstrate its use. All right, to turn it on, we press the RF gain power on knob. It has a built-in power supply, no need for an external power supply. And as it warms up, you can hear that uh, there's a bit of a pitch shift. Usually it takes, at least my radio, about 15 minutes to become stable. It'll move about 300 to 500 hertz during that warm-up period. All right, we can hear a number of stations coming in. And we're hearing more than we normally would um, because I've got the selectivity set to two and a half kilohertz, which would be suitable for listening to sideband, but if we're gonna do Morse code, we probably ought to have it on a thousand hertz or narrower. Okay, so one of the interesting things about the Century 21 is that it uses direct conversion receiver. And what that means is that you hear a signal on both sides of the zero beat. Uh, super heterodynes, generally you're only going to hear the signal on one side of the zero beat. So what does that mean? Uh, let me narrow it down a little bit more here. Let's find a station. All right, I'm approaching that station, coming down the frequency band. And I just went zero beat on them. I hear the same station now on the other side of the zero beat. So you can see that you can hear the station on both sides of the zero beat. So how do you find a station? How do you tune one in to actually talk to him? Well, that's what the zero beat button is for in your offset switch. So let's, the, the way I generally approach it is I'm going to have my offset um, on the plus side, you could work it from the minus side. I don't know that there's an advantage either way. And I'm going to approach a station. And you can hear that if I cross over him, he's I've zero beated him at an offset, but that's not what I want. So I'm going to press my zero beat button. This is going to take the offset out of the circuit. Hear how he goes away? If I go to the other side of the zero beat on him and I press that, you can hear him and he's high pitched. I haven't zero beat him on this side, but he sounds right. Sounds the same over here, but now Press zero beat, he's gone. I am on his frequency and I can talk to him. So that's how you zero beat a station with a C21. Uh, just to demonstrate a little bit better. So find the station. I'm going to intentionally get on. stopped. Okay, so here, without the zero beat pressed in, so I haven't pressed zero beat, Am I, have I actually zero beat him? That's not the same station, so I have zero beat him. I can probably find that other station. You can see it's a bit tricky. Alright, do you hear him? He's not zero beat.
So as they go, as the signal fades away, now he's gone. He's zero beat. And I move the offset to where it's comfortable to listen to him. He's zero beat. Let's do it again. See, I might have my offset to where he sounds right, but when I hit zero beat, he's not zero beat. You stop sending. Okay. Now I could move my offset to where he sounds okay, but I want to hit zero beat. I'm hearing him. If he's properly zero beated, I won't hear him. There, he faded away while zero beats pressed in. And I stopped transmitting. See? Zero beat. I move the offset to where he's comfortable to listen to. All right. This looks more complicated than it is, but um, that's how you zero beat a station with a 1021. Okay, so how do we how do we do how do we set for transmit? Well, I'm going to switch to a dummy load. I'm still hearing some stuff through my dummy load here, but this is for demonstration purposes. I am on a dummy load right now. Um, this drive knob is how much, how many watts of input power you're going to be sending. So right now the power supply is providing uh, eight or nine watts just to run the radio and receive mode. And if I press drive, you can see it bump up a bit. You can't see my power meter, but uh, there's no power coming out of the radio right now. But this has put it in transmit mode. Now what we want to do is set our input power to not go past that block. So uh, generally anything under 60 watts of input power is going to be fine. 70 is the max. If you go beyond it, it's going to trip the radio. Uh, it'll, it'll, it has an auto protect circuit, or it should have an auto protect circuit, to actually turn the radio off. I'm not going to demonstrate that because it's, it's hard on both the finals and the power supply. And I generally operate QRP, so I'm, I'm rarely getting up to that input power level. So I'm going to press drive. I'm going to move my drive knob, and we'll see the input power start to change here. There, it jumped up. Now if I look at my power meter, I'm outputting 3 watts. 3 watts of RF. It's taken 30 watts of input to give me 3 watts of RF on 40 meters. I can take it up to 50 and now I'm at right at 15 watts of output all right so that's how you set input power don't ever go beyond that block now a problem with using your dummy load is when you actually switch to your antenna um, impedance may be a little bit different it may be higher uh, it may be lower with your antenna by a few ohms than your dummy load so that will draw more power through the radio so be careful about doing this into a dummy load especially anywhere near max power and then switching to your antenna I'm gonna switch out a dummy load I'm gonna find an open frequency here and I'm gonna to have to plug in a key I don't have a key okay got a key plugged in now so I had set my input power to right at 50 watts of input. I haven't changed anything. I have an open frequency here. Listen for a little bit more, make sure there's nobody on it. And now we're going to watch that power meter again when I key down and make sure it's not moving um, into uh, over, over power mode. Okay, it's going to about the same Place. Now this antenna is about 1.4 to 1 and into my dummy load I was transmitting 15 watts to the antenna my power meter tells me I'm only at 10 watts. So adjust your RF 
input power while you're on a dummy load, I would recommend staying away from max power. Um, and that'll prevent you from QRMing people. But also be careful if you're using an antenna of unknown impedance, because it could have lower impedance than your dummy load, and if it does, it's going to draw more power through the radio and possibly trip the circuit um, or cause other problems. So basically that's all there is to using a, a C21. Oh, one more maybe interesting note. So you notice these two sides of the dial. Um, the top numbers here, if you look, this says 3.6, 7.1. The bottom one, 14, 4, 21, 4, 28, or yeah, 28, 4. The top side is um, the top side is lower sideband. The bottom numbers are upper sideband, and you'll notice they run opposite to each other. Why is that? Well, the PTO is very very simple on this thing. It's just providing an offset. When you're on lower sideband, the offset's in one direction. When you're on upper sideband, the offset's in the other. What does that mean? Well, I'm down here in the CW section, 70. 725, 750, 775, 80 meters, 3.5, 3.525, 3.550, etc. So that's how you read the, um, the frequency for the lower side band. But if you look, if I were to switch to 20 meters right now, I'm up here in the side band portion of the band. I'm at 14575, and it's going down. Uh, well, actually, I read it this way: 14425, 14450, 14475. And to get to the CW portion of the band, I have to go all the way around the dial to the other side of the dial to operate 20 meters. And uh, this PTO is probably on its last legs. But now I'm down in the side in the CW portion of 20 meters. You can see 14.0, 14.025, and uh, bands aren't real great today. I'm not hearing anything. Same, same issue. Um, zero beating stations on this side. If I press that zero beat button, here he's high pitched. Now he's zero beat. And I move my offset to where he's comfortable to listen to. Right. Oh, also, once you set your input power for drive on one band, Reset it down to zero. You got to do the same thing again for the different band. This will be very different from band to band. I think you, uh, well, I'll demonstrate that. So I'm going to go to my dummy load and let's get the same 50 watt input. Our knob is in a different place than it was before. If I had it this high on seven meters, 40 meters, I'll not go seven, blow right past that. And the higher up in frequency you go, the more input power it takes to drive because frequency is higher, it's taking more power. So if I was all the way up in 10 meters, go back to zero to get it up to 50, I'm now here. Again, if I started in 7 meters, 40 meters, or 80 not meters at that level, I blow right past my input power. So. Reset your drive every time you change bands. Don't forget to zero beat and enjoy the good old fashioned 10 Tech Century 21.